internal bronchioli. So on this model, what we can see is we can see that pattern we were just talking about where we have a trachea dividing into primary bronchi that go to each set of lungs, primary bronchi dividing into secondary bronchi, secondary bronchi dividing into tertiary bronchi, tertiary bronchi dividing into bronchioli, and bronchioli dividing into terminal bronchioli. Now, the lung itself is constructed with lobes. So each one of these big things separated by this division is a lobe. So notice that the lobe itself is made up of these smaller things that are subdivided. So these are called lobules. So very much like the liver, where we had a lobe and a lobule, the lung is constructed the same way, where we have lobes separated into lobules. So a terminal bronchioli leads to a lobule. So what we're seeing on the other side of the model is what would be in this area we call a lobule over here. And so the tube coming to this is a terminal bronchioli. And then the branches off terminal bronchioli are respiratory bronchioli. And then respiratory bronchioli give rise to these straight little ducts we're seeing right here at the top, which are called alveolar ducts. And an alveolar duct goes to a grape cluster-like thing that we call an alveolar sac. So what we have is a branching pattern again with terminal bronchioli, respiratory bronchioli, respiratory bronchioli giving rise to alveolar ducts and alveolar ducts filling, uh, feeding air to one of these uh, grape cluster like things called an alveolar sac. And then each little round grape that makes up an alveolar sac is called an alveoli. And then the alveoli would be lined to the inside with type one uh, alveolar cells, which are simple squamous epithelium. And then laying on the, on the outside of the alveoli would be a, a capillary bed. And so we diffuse oxygen across this surface into our blood, and then we diffuse carbon dioxide out of our blood across this surface to exchange gases. So that process is called external respiration, where we're exchanging gases with our blood. The movement of air through this whole pathway down to the alveolar sac is called pulmonary ventilation. So we can divide the, part, the breathing into the physical movement of air, pulmonary ventilation, and then the diffusion of oxygen into our blood and the diffusion of carbon dioxide out of our blood, which we call external respiration. So as we look at this model, then uh, the bone material here is our ribs. So this represents our thoracic wall. So remember that the lungs belong to their own space, which is called a pleural cavity. And then the heart would sit down here in what we call the pericardial cavity. So what, because this is a space and it's part of the ventral body cavity, then we're gonna have membranes that line the outside of the space. So this membrane we see lining the outside of the space right here would be the parietal pleura. The membrane right here on the surface of the lung itself would be the visceral pleura. And then the space in between would be the pleural cavity. And so that would be true of both, of, of both sets of lungs. So just as we were just talking about, the lungs set in the thoracic cavity. We see our ribs here. And then in between them is this area we call the mediastium, which contains the heart. So as we talked about a little bit ago, the lungs are divided into lobes. And what separates lungs into lobes are fissures. So on the left side, because the heart sets disproportionately to the left, our right lung is larger than our left lung. And so our left lung only has two lobes, a superior lobe and an inferior lobe. And the little fissure that separates the two lobes is at an angle. So recall a plane on an angle is called an oblique plane. So this is referred to as the oblique fissure, separating the superior lobe from the inferior lobe. Now, if we look at the right side, then we'll see that we actually have two fissures. We have a fissure here, and then if we turn it a little more, we can see we have a fissure right here. So this one's running at an angle again. 
And so this is the oblique fissure on the right side. This upper fissure that we're seeing here is actually the longitudinal fissure. So this would be a longitudinal plane versus a perpendicular plane up here. So the longitudinal fissure separates the superior lobe from the middle lobe. And then the oblique fissure separates the uh, middle lobe from the inferior lobe. So on the right side we have three lung uh, lobes and on the right side we have two lung lobes. And what you'll notice is there's a depressed area on the edge of the lung on the left side where the heart would set. And so this is called a cardiac notch. And as we take this lung off, what we would see is that the cardiac notch is a depression in that where we can actually see where the heart sets disproportionately to the left in our thoracic cavity. So that our lung has three lobes over here and only two lobes over here. Now the role of the heart is to pump deoxygenated blood to the lungs to become oxygenated. So the major blood vessel coming off the heart that pumps blood to the lungs is called the pulmonary trunk. And it divides into left and right pulmonary arteries. So one thing many students make the mistake of doing is thinking that anything blue on a model is a vein and anything red on a model is an artery. Where in reality, anything blue on a model is carrying deoxygenated blood and anything red on a model is carrying oxygenated blood. So it just so happens that with the right side of the heart pumping blood to the lungs, that arteries are carrying deoxygenated blood to the lungs and pulmonary veins are carrying oxygenated blood back from the lungs to the heart. So, so the pulmonary system in terms of colors is reversed to the rest of the body. And then when we get to fetal circulation, we'll see that fetal circulation of the placenta follows the same pattern as the lungs. So when you're looking at a model, if we take the heart out, then these larger blue blood vessels that we're seeing here are the pulmonary arteries and then the red blood vessels we're seeing here are the pulmonary veins coming from either the right or the left lung. Now just like in the kidney, there's a depressed area in the lung called the hilus. And what we're seeing here, the blue things are arteries because they're carrying deoxygenated blood to the lungs. And the red things we're seeing are veins which are carrying oxygenated blood back from the lungs toward the heart. And then the tubes, the, the primary and secondary bronchi we see, all enter and exit the, the lung via this depressed area called the hilus of the lung. So this is a pig pluck, which is the entire lungs that have been removed and desiccated. So pigs, because they're larger animals, actually have larger lungs than we have. And so if you look at a pig, uh, what we would see is we actually have two fissures on the left side and four fissures on the right side. So instead of having two and three, they have three and four. But as we're looking at it, this is the pig's larynx. So this is the pig's epiglottis, this extension here. Off the back, we have the, the little cartilages we talked about in, in a human, which would be the arytenoid cartilages and the little tiny cornuculate cartilages here. And inside of this is where the pig's uh, voice box would be. And then this is the pig's trachea with the little tracheal rings carrying oxygen down. So if we re rotate it this way, we can see where the trachea actually uh, bifurcates into the primary bronchi of the pig lungs. And then again, what I was trying to show you on the models is that we divide the lungs into lobes and then we divide the lobes into lobules. So you can see that there are little subsets of the lung that we can see. So each one of these little subsets is a lobule of the lung. Uh, and so it's kind of a cool representation of what lung tissue really looks like. So when you, when you handle this, you'll be amazed at how light it is. So our alveoli and our alveoli sacs dominate our lungs and they create an organ that's largely full of air and we have to have all that air capacity to exchange oxygen because there's only 21% oxygen in the atmosphere. 
So what happens with the disease called emphysema are the little alveoli break down and we get bigger and bigger air, air spaces and we lose surface area and diffusion is, is, is directly related to surface area. So the greater the surface area, the greater the rate of the diffusion. So what happens with people with emphysema is they lose enough surface area over time that they can't respire on earth. So we have to put them on oxygen to try to increase the amount of oxygen in their lungs to drive diffusion of oxygen upward so that they can continue to stay alive.